My name is Officer Jonna Watson. I'm the Public Information Officer for the Oakland Police Department. We'd like to update you. We also know that we're just coming off of a weekend. It's Monday morning. Uh, maybe not everyone has watched or, or has information about what has transpired since last Friday. Last Friday, December 2nd, at about 11.32 p.m., a fire broke out in the 1300 block of 31st Avenue here in Oakland. Uh, last uh, evening, the victim loss was 33. That's 33 families who have lost a loved one. That's 33 of our loved ones who here in the city of Oakland we have lost a, as a community. Uh, this morning we'd like to update you regarding uh, additional information regarding uh, our losses, not only to families, but to our community. We have Deputy Sheriff Modest, who's going to provide you additional uh, information uh, regarding uh, victims, loss, and uh, families that have been notified. We also have Battalion Chief Drayton, who will be able to update you regarding uh, the work that the fire department has done along with other agencies who have been assisting. I'd like to turn it over to Deputy Modest. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Ty Modest, T-Y-A-M-O-D-S-T-E, spokesperson for the Alameda County Sheriff's Office. Since our last update, we have located and recovered 36 victims. Yes. Since our last update, we have located and recovered 36 victims. Of the 36, 11 have been positively identified and their family members have been appropriately notified. That number is inclusive of the eight that were, um, the number eight that was given last night. Um, at this time, we won't be updating this morning the list of names of the located um, and identified victims. We are giving the family members an opportunity to update other family members to notify them and give them an opportunity to grieve together before we release those additional names. Hi, good morning once again. Can you hear me? Uh, the fire department last night at approximately 10 o'clock uh, was asked by ATF and our local investigators to stop our recovery work in the back of the building based on the fact that we now feel very strongly that we have the section of the building that was the area of origin of where the fire started. Uh, the investigators will be here in just a few hours to start uh, building out their team and really getting deeper into that area of the building. Again, it's the back of the building. So when we enter and go straight back to the back wall, center of the building, we've got a square footage area that has been quarantined off for additional investigation. And just after midnight, uh, we had some crews doing some surveilling and reconnaissance on the next door roof and noticed a slight lean in the parapet on the A side of the building, the front of the warehouse, at the very top of the exterior wall, we have about a three inch lean going into the center of the building. For us as firefighters working under a wobbly, potentially collapsing exterior wall is extremely dangerous. We will not put our firefighters in danger at this point, and we will not put Alameda County Sheriff in that precarious situation with us. So we did a full work stoppage at approximately 1218 last night and have not been continuing with body recovery since. All of the structural engineers and contract workers will be here at approximately 8 a.m. to develop a game plan. We hope that we'll be back in the building between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock today to continue the recovery effort. Uh, we know you'll have some questions, so we'll go ahead and we'll start over here and we'll work our way uh, to the left. Can you describe what a parapet is? So at the top of the exterior building, if you imagine where the roof meets the wall, there's about a five foot uh, un 
reinforced section of the exterior wall. It's leaning in three inches. It should be straight. We're concerned that that unreinforced area potentially could collapse. Um, absolutely. At this point, we are um, using the number 70% as the area of the building that we have searched and efficiently and effectively done recovery on. Again, the small area in the back for the area of origin and the front area based on the safety concern has not been searched yet. Yes, uh, so do you believe that there's still more victims and also are you any closer to finding a cause for this fire? We are no closer to finding a cause and we absolutely believe that the number of fire fatalities will increase. You see, so when 70%, when you get to 100%, will you then conclusively say there are no more victims in there, or will it take more after that to go through the remains of this building to say for sure? If you get to 100 today or tomorrow, will the search be over at that point? I don't want to speak on that one. Yeah, can, can, you, can you speak up a little bit louder? We've had a hard time. When you get to here. 100%, the, the search, once it's done at that point, will the search for remains be over at that point, or are they going to have to sift through the remains of this building looking for more? Will it be? completely done the search at 100% for the well, what, for once, once the search is, is completed, uh, the, the primary focus has been on the location and recovery. Uh, that's what we've been talking about for the last three days. We're going uh, actually on day four. This started uh, last Friday, December 2nd, so we're really on our fourth day. Uh, primary focus to answer your question, sir, has always been on uh, the search and the recovery. Once that is the completed, then we'll start having the conversations and shifting this investigation to whichever direction it's appropriate. Right now, it's a little bit too early. Uh, again, as Battalion Chief said, uh, ATF has been here. Uh, they need to do investigative work to determine which direction this investigation is going to go. Very good question. We'll certainly keep everybody informed. Again, we have right now 36 families not only grieving for their lost ones, but also they want to have answers. And we as a city collectively are working to find those answers. We want to provide answers not only for the family, but for our community. And also, what can we learn from this? To, in our attempts to prevent this happening, again, if there are lessons learned, absolutely. I'm going to go, Amy, go ahead. So we anticipate, based on the weather reports, that rain uh, will start on Wednesday and increase by Friday. The fire department feels very reticent in getting in too quickly today, um, obviously. The, the natural desire for firefighters and anyone in public service is to quickly get in, mitigate a situation, mitigate an emergency, and effect, you know, rescue, in this case, recovery. We will not be going faster to get ahead of the rain. So we're going to be just as comprehensive, just as methodical, and just as analytical to make sure that we're successful in a full recovery in the next few days. Battalion Chief, I know you still going through the building. We know where the bulk of the victims were found. We hear that you are meeting almost out of the building where they all were. So as we stated for the last few days, um, the majority over the last two days since I've been on scene were in the center of the building. How many more victims? Okay, so Teresa, you can um, right back to you. Go ahead, sir. Um, this is a question for you, Donna. We know there's there's been a lot of talk uh, about how inspectors had not been able to gain access to the building. But we know police had been in that building at, at some point even this year. Would they have been required if they saw something in there let the city know that it looks like people are living in here. Maybe you guys should go check that. What would be the policy in that sort of case? That's a very good question, and we anticipate a lot of those uh, answers to come in in the next days, next weeks, so and maybe in next months. Question. And I'm and I'm going to answer your question. No, no so, okay. so anytime law enforcement, such as the Oakland Police Department, first responders go into any situation. If they should notice any type of violations, if they should notice any criminal activity, 
Uh, we record it, we document it, we forward it. I also want to share with you the Oakland Police Department was one of the first law enforcement agencies in the country to have body-worn cameras, so a lot of activity that we do is often recorded. So let's say we came to this location and there were some concerns, whether it's a, criminally, uh, a criminal concern or whether it's a violation. Uh, we may have captured that on our own body-worn camera uh, footage. Again, this is a very large, uh, not only incident, but a tragedy. And so we immediately, working with other city services, uh, collectively, everyone has been working through the weekend, and rightfully so. We have a lot of answers to provide to families and to provide to our community. And, 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 and as we're looking at those answers, we're looking at everything from our body-worn camera footage, how many calls we as the Oakland Police Department have gone to, uh, what types of calls, documentation. We're working with our planning and building department, with our Alameda County District Attorney. So we have a lot of moving parts to this and we'll certainly find answers to all of these questions. Uh, we do request patience, uh, time. We want to do a very thorough investigation, whichever uh, direction that takes us, whether it's criminal or it remains right now as an investigation. Uh, we want to be factual with our information. Uh, yes, you, and you have a question. Yes. was more information about the potential point of origin is that correct yes. um, based on the significant charring and damage in the building we've got some areas where the steel is actually twisted and wrapped in the back of the building we can see fire spread um, ATF and our local investigators feel very strongly that they have identified the section of the building that is the area of origin It appears to be the back of the building where if we can imagine where the artist collective was on the first floor and potentially during this concert the dance floor was just above. Okay, Alec, go ahead, Alec. are having a hard time hearing your question, but yes, uh, work stoppage, absolute concern uh, for the structure and the safety of the workers that are going in there. And uh, additionally, I know we want to get into a lot of the questions about uh, cause of fire, where it started. Uh, I think that the fire department is doing an excellent job uh, facilitating a lot of uh, complicated situations, but we also want to uh, talk with ATF and have them have their opportunity to come in and do a full inspection where we can provide you more information. I'm going to take one last. I'm going to take one last question, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. For the yes. um, fire official here, you just said something I want to follow up on. Did you indicate that this area that they're looking at, the, the origin, would have been on the first floor more likely than the second? It's hard to determine based on the fact that we've got fire damage all the way through to the roof on the back wall. It's in the rafters, on the steel beams, and until we have a, an absolute, I don't even want to speculate on whether or not it was a first or a second floor. Okay, because it seemed that first answer that you may have been indicating it was first floor. That was no. my wrong. Yes. So, so again, we'll certainly provide more uh, information, but we, we would like to really have ATF on board have that opportunity to uh, determine uh, causes, areas, things like that. We're going to conclude this portion of our media briefing. Uh, throughout the day, we will continue to provide information to you. We'll send out a media availability for the next time and location. Right now, because of the work stoppage, because we have other crews that will be coming back and joining us, it's very difficult for us to set that time. We want to come back to you with more information. Again, as the Alameda County Sheriff's 
office has stated will provide names of the lost loved ones uh, later today. Uh, we'll make sure that you do have that information. Thank you very much for your patience. All right.